Today's guest on our series called Life Journeys is Mark Jackson. Mark is currently the director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministry at St. Andrew's Lutheran Church in Montemidae, Minnesota. Formerly was the professor of Children, Youth, and Family Studies at Trinity Lutheran College. And I would say, in my estimation, he is a nationally known leader in faith formation. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Dave. Tell us a bit about your journey, some of the mentors, some of the high places, the zigs and the zags, the detours, just a little bit about your journey. Sure. Um, you know, sometimes people will ask me, you know, when was it or what moment in your life did you realize, you know, fill in the blank, you know, about leadership or about faith? And, and uh, I always had a hard time with that question because I don't think I can ever pinpoint one particular place or person so often my response is how much time do you have because you know do you want the whole list or just some highlights because there's a number of these uh, markers as you say um, along the way um, but all along the way I think it's just been people who have, who have guided and helped and supported and encouraged and then I've hoped I've done the same thing you know in my life along the way as well the field of leadership in business and organizations really grew out of a military uh, background and some of what we learned in military leadership made its way into you know corporate business leadership and then and then people along the way have said well wait a minute let's look at this differently so Robert Greenleaf comes along writes a book called servant leadership and actually looks at you know uh, executive leadership not as authoritarian or directing like you might have and maybe necessarily so in the military setting but to say how does a leader become a servant a servant to the employees that he or she uh, supervises and works with, and a servant really to the organization, what it's about. Now, in a Christian context, you know, we look at that and say, well, you know, we point to Jesus and say, well, what he was a leader, sure, but in what ways? Um, who did he talk with? What did he do? And um, what was his style? And so I think that metaphor of servant leadership comes very nicely into um, how we understand living out our faith as not just leaders, but as servant leaders. What are some of those those kinds of things that by being active and not just sitting in a classroom? So as an example, you know, in a high school, a student came to me and said, you know, we have this uh, youth conference coming up, you know, in a year and a half or two years. And I'm wondering if you would, uh, we want to know if you would be willing to um, to lead that. So my response to him was, um, yes, I will, I will do it on one condition. And he said, what's that? I said that we do it together. And there was a big silence on the other end of the phone. And he says, really? I said, yeah, let's do it together. Um, I remember the moment that we sat down with the uh, person that was doing out the contract or we'd signed the contract with at the hotel where the event was going to be held. And Evan and I were sitting uh, together across the table uh, from the woman. And she asked me a question or she asked a question about something we were going to do, you know, with the event or some finer point. And she looked at me for the answer, and I looked uh, to Evan sitting next to me, and he gave the answer. And she quickly realized that the person who was going to probably do most of the talking wasn't the adult, but the high schooler. <laughs> and for me, that was the example of, you know, we're going to do this together. I'm going to be here with you, but ultimately, I'm going to get out of the way and let you lead. And ultimately, when the event came, came about, I said to him, when, when this happened, he goes, well, how much are you up front? I said, I don't want my back to leave the back wall of the room unless you need me. You're gonna be the one that all eyes are gonna be on. And that's exactly how it happened. I think other than I had to give some of the rules about being quiet in the hallways. <laughs> um, but that, that was my experience uh, growing up and that's what I've tried to model um, you know, with, the, with the young people that I've worked with over the years. I guess a second, you know, nugget is um, a lot of it is also about our personal selves, our, our personal lives. When you work in um, ministry or human services, um, even the medical world or what we kind of call these high touch, you know, high human touch, it's important that people take care of themselves. And I'm probably my own uh, preaching to my, myself here, but, um, you know, there's that adage of you have to take care of yourself before you take care of others. And I think that's physically your physical health, that's your mental health and your emotions, and I also think it's your spiritual health. I think a third uh, nugget might be is just um, to remember that we're tapped into to faith. You know, I, I love the um, Arrhenius uh, uh, quote that the glory of God is a person fully alive, 
And I do believe that uh, spiritually, if we're not fully alive and experience the joy uh, that we have, um, you know, in our faith in God, that we experience that um, it's hard to be alive. <laughs> it's hard to be joyful without taking care of ourselves um, uh, spiritually. So I believe that uh, it does bring God joy when we enjoy life and that we feel alive um, and that we notice uh, little things along the way. Um, you know, that Alice Walker uh, quote um, that says, I think it pisses God off when you walk by the color purple in a field somewhere and don't notice it. And I think that, you know, those small, uh, those small things yeah, that we find in creation among other people is God revealing, you know, God's self to us that helps us remember that we're tied to the creator, uh, tied to creation, tied to each other. And that as we make those discoveries, you know, day in and day out, that we become a person who's fully alive. And that really becomes the glory of God. Well, Mark, this conversation has brought uh, joy to me and I know to the people who will be listening to your life journey and what you've learned along the way. Thank you. Thank you so much. And blessings on your journey in the days ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate this opportunity.